Hey folks, Techniverse here. I just got another new laser engraver and we're gonna be testing it out. Today I wanted to show you how to use Lightburn software to create a test palette for the item that you're working with to get different burn depths and settings for the same material. So we're gonna jump over to Lightburn and we'll take a look and I'll show you exactly how to do this. It's pretty simple, but very effective. And what you end up with is a tile or card like this that'll tell you um, your speeds and what you get. You can see on this middle one here, uh, it actually didn't burn anything because it was going really, really fast. So um, I did make sure to label these. We're going to do a longer one of these and flip it up this way and get a variation of different settings now that I know I want one somewhere between here and here. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, and we'll just get right into it. All right, so this is Lightburn software. and I personally am more used to using laser gerbil because it's what I've used with my other machines in the past, but this one works with Lightburn and it works really, really well. So we are gonna take a look at the three different layers I already have here. And I'm gonna show you how to add another layer and so on and so forth. Basically, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this one. And I wasn't too pleased with it, uh, so we are gonna alter the settings a little bit. So I am gonna take a look at my card here. And I wanna change this to be somewhere in between these two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the speed Okay, and this is in millimeters per second, and I'm gonna change it to, let's do 33 millimeters per second, same speed as above, and then that's gonna give us a really dark burn. And that's gonna give us a light burn. So we want something in between, obviously we're gonna go with Let's try speed 67, max power at 60. Okay, um, so now we should get a variation from dark to uh, medium to light here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one and drag it down to about here. Do the same with this. So now I wanna take and add another one of these in here. So I'm gonna control C and what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom here and select another layer. Hit Control V. Okay, so it changed this one to layer three, but uh, it put this one down here. So this is the one that I actually just altered. So what we have our our medium. So this is the one I want to move. So it, it's kind of counterintuitive where it puts the copy in place of the old one and not vice versa. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and copy another one of these real quickly. And now we have all of our layers here. Okay, so let's get these. Um, and this is the order that they're going to print in. So we do kind of want them to go in order. So one, oh, show, that's going to go down. That one's going to go up to there. Okay, um, so now this is our third, our fourth, excuse me. And this is our last. So let's compress these. This is, we got these all out of order, but it's okay. We'll fix it. Let's do this there 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 Not too close right. move it up move this one up and they're not perfectly aligned on the left here, so um, let's fix that a little bit. Okay, um, so this is good enough. It doesn't need to be exact. So what we're looking at here is this scale, right, where we have um, different powers and actually let's just start this over here 
change the speed here to 25. That's the first one. That's the second one, 33. That's the third one, okay, so let's do 45, okay. And make that one show again. Make sure we're in the right place. Okay, so this one we will do uh, 60 and 60. Let's do 70. No, no, no. 60 and 70, not 70 and 70. 60 okay we want to keep our power the same so all we're adjusting is the speed and we're going to note the varying effect on what it is and then we'll leave that one at 100 so small jump here a little bit bigger a little bit bigger and then um the gap in there so what we should see is the darkest here because it is um do i have that right yeah it's moving the slowest so it's going to create a deeper burn and then down here this should be the lightest. So let's go throw this on the laser and we will come back and see what we got. And here we are, we're ready to carve. I'm in a separate room on the floor because there is a uh, much better ventilation in here. Let's go ahead and kick this guy on. And I do have my laser glasses on. It looks like we are well short of the edge of that, so we're doing pretty well. And a little bit of carving footage here. And remember, according to our G-code, this should be the darkest of our tags. I guess we'll see at which point it gets too light. Uh, but basically, we're using the same amount of power and increasing the speed. Now, we're nowhere near the maximum speed of this thing. We are at 60% of the power, which is pretty good. And we're getting a nice, decent burn. We could go a little bit darker by increasing the power or decreasing the speed a little bit more. But as you can see, it is moving faster now. It has completed that first one. We'll just kind of watch and see what happens. Uh, so far, I'm pretty pleased with this laser engraver. Um, really, really happy that it works immediately out of the box with light burn because um, I had had some issues with any slicer other than gerbil on the first few that I tried. Um, but yeah, this is amazing. So. I'm gonna let this go ahead and continue and we'll get a good look at this when it's completely done and I'll show you the difference in the five different ones that we created and we will label them so that we can remember for future use and kind of use this card as a flash card for this material. So what did we end up with? Well, as you can see, our fifth one didn't print at all uh, and the fourth one is really, really light, but I do have a nice scale of varying ranges. so. What we're going to do here is increase the power and decrease the speed slightly and see if we can get a more varying range. There is also a little bit of shakiness down here and because we're using higher speeds and lower power, uh, it is causing shakiness or jerkiness in the machine. So slowing the speed down and increasing the power should achieve a similar effect but without that jerkiness, get a little bit cleaner of an engraving. So let's check it out and see if it works. So it's a combination of two things that's leading to the depth and darkness of our engraving. And that is, as we've spoken about throughout this whole video, the speed and the power. Now, as I said, we want to reduce that jitter. And, and honestly, we're not moving very fast. This thing can move a lot faster than this. Maybe that's part of the problem. So we're going to try a few different things. So to measure the exact effects of this, here's what we're going to do. We are going to raise the power on each of these. Oh, I made a mistake. That last one didn't show because it was at 20. That's okay. We'll go with four of them. 
We'll just delete that all together. Delete. Okay, so what we're gonna do, yeah, mistakes happen. Um, let's see, 70? 70% 70 of max power? And we'll leave the speed on that one. It should be pretty dark. Seventy. Okay, so now we've raised the power. So what does that mean? It means at the same speed with higher power, it's going to burn deeper into our material than it did at the same speed at lower power. So uh, pretty ob obvious and intuitive, but uh, let's jump over and burn this guy and see what the difference is between our other burning. All right, engraving round two. Let's hit the button here. And remember, this is just slightly more power at pretty much the same speed. So they should be slightly darker than the ones above. Um, and what this is going to do is give us a larger variation of scales to choose from when we decide exactly what darkness we want something to be. And it'll also let us choose what our darkest value is going to be if we're doing something pixelated or something like that. So. We'll let her finish up there. And here we are. We're back. And as you can see, uh, we have pretty similar results, but there are a few glaring and noticeable differences here. Mainly the 70-70 is a lot more in-depth than the 7060. So you can see that a lot better. So that's kind of the scale we want to be in right there so we don't get this patchiness as well. So with the power up at 70, I think that's where I'm going to be using this material the most. And you can see that most of the other layers are very, very similar, if only slightly darker at just the right angle. But the big difference you get in that bottom layer um, that tells me that the power increase was a good idea. That's pretty much the gist of what we're gonna to touch on in this video. So uh, I hope you guys liked it. And don't forget, till the end of May, we're taking donations for a fundraiser. You can find the video about it here and the links in the description. So head on over and contribute to a worthy cause. Be on the lookout for match days when I'll be matching donations until my available funds are depleted. If you're curious about the next match day, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Technivorous. That's it for this one. Technivorous out.